buried underneath Westlake Hills is a relic from a distant era. And as students head back to school, we found a real life lesson in history, a fallout shelter built more than six decades ago. KXN's George Rodas gives us a window into the past. Austin has changed a lot since the 60s, but this door has preserved a view into the past. That looks pretty cool. We're gonna need a flashlight. This should be enough. Let's go on down. So it looks like perhaps this uh, shelter wasn't made for someone like me. Oh, cobwebs. Not my favorite. Well, the beds are still made. Everything in this bomb shelter has been in place since the 1960s. Supplies, food, some clearly having seen better days. They're all still here. Essentially, there's enough space here for a couple people to live in underneath the surface should they need to. Ooh. I do remember finding this map and it had the crosshairs right on San Antonio. Craig Denham discovered the bunker shortly after buying the property years ago. He's since sold it, but still fascinated by the mindset of Americans in that era. And to have that much fear and to be that scared that you would you know, go to these lengths to build something that, you know, not cheap to build. We'll see you guys in about 60 years. These photos at the Austin History Center show us just how Austin took the threat of nuclear war. The city going as far as building a model fallout shelter at Zilker Park for people to use as a guide should they want one themselves. Wow, look at that dapper young man. <laughs> how old were you in this? I would have been 37. Terrell Blodgett was Austin's assistant city manager in the late 50s, early 60s. He also served as the city's civil defense director. His job to warn Austin should there be an attack. He remembers that era well and finds Americans' treatment of the threat of nuclear war today peculiar. I'm sort of surprised that there is not more uh, concern over the uh, possibility of, of real uh, trouble than there is. Oh, this is built in a periscope. That's what's oh, that is cool. So you can see the zombie apocalypse. Denham doesn't fear nuclear war and thinks Americans shouldn't. I think we're just removed from it. I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like that big a threat. I mean, uh, I mean, I know the world's getting smaller, but North Korea sure seems far away. And, and uh, can the missiles really reach, the, reach Texas? I don't know. A lot has changed since the 60s. George Rodas, KXAN News. Well, Blodgett says people back in the 60s didn't panic over nuclear fear, fears, that is, excuse me, and he doesn't feel that we should now. But he also said... He warns against feeling too confident in not being prepared. Not as many Americans own bunkers as they did back then, of course, but some say the numbers are rising. A company out of East Texas says their sales are booming. And take a look at what modern day bunkers may look like. Luxurious, spacious uh, suites. Some are just huge, very different from what George, George showed us, those very small um, areas. What was so fascinating though is I want to know <laughs> what else was in there. I mean, what, what kind of food? I saw soup. Were there yeah, Twinkies? Right. <laughs> you know, because Twinkies have a shelf life True. of like That's a very good point. Years. That's a great point, yeah. I remember my mom telling me that when she was in school, they would do drills in, Get in school about, yeah, in case, yeah. I'm not sure what yeah. a desk would do in that situation, right. but they did it nonetheless. <laughs> Fun to look back, yeah. right? I